What is going on guys, in today's video I will show you the top 5 best PR builds in New World Eternum that are optimized for both PvE and PvP. As I will cover a lot of builds so not to spend too much time, for each setup I will give you a quick overview of its playstyle. Then as well I will explain the best skill tree setup, then what gear should you wear, then even how many attributes should you allocate for each stat and much more. So moving over to the first build which is the Great Axe and the Spear. This setup's main focus is on melting down enemies with a lot of HP, as you will be doing crazy amount of damage, especially against bosses and heavy armor users. A lot of players really like this build, because they can get great mobility and AOV damage from the Great Axe, while also having amazing crowd control from the Spear. This is for sure the best and most optimized Great Axe build that any player at any stage of progression can just pick up and play. So let's take a look at the build. For our gear choice we will go with the light category, as this will give us the perfect balance between damage and survivability. In my opinion almost all melee builds should wear something above the light category, because as you are required to fight in close range, so being low HP and weak on defense can turn out to be very devastating. However, if you use this build right then you can turn this disadvantage into a huge strength. So getting in and out of fights and destroying all the enemies that we see. Next we have the attributes and we should get 350 strength, then 250 dexterity and 50 constitution. But also if you feel like you are too weak then you can also trade 100 dexterity for 100 constitution. But personally for me these stats work the best, as we get to do insane amount of damage and still be tough enough to withstand hard enough fights. Then next up we have the skill tree and this is how it look like for the Great Axe. These nodes and the overall layout is structured around increasing AOV damage and having skills to catch running enemies, as most of our damage will come from the Great Axe, so having great AOV potential is huge. And then again this is how it look like for the Spear, so this time we built it around CC and quick bursts of damage, as switching between weapons will cast dearly, so then instead we can use the CC and then right away get bunch of damage off quickly. If you are interested in the best gear, perks, consumables and everything else, then keep watching until the end of the video. And overall, if you are looking for amazingly fun and high DPS melee build, then here you go. Next, let's take a look at another tank build, which is the sword with a spear. This setup has become very popular in the recent updates, as its playstyle is focused on being able to quickly initiate a fight on a single enemy, then put them into a crowd control combination, which then afterwards opens them up for a huge amount of damage opportunity. This build has an amazing survivability, and he can pretty much outrun just about any enemy. So let's take a look at the setup, for our weight we have two options, so go full heavy or maybe decide to go with medium armor. As this build has quite a lot of CC and mobility, so you're not required to go full tank. However, I personally recommend to go with the medium armor, as this build has two ways of playing it, so be a tank with a high CC or be a melee bruiser that is super annoying and can do a huge amount of DPS. The latter option has higher risk but also higher DPS, and just overall in my opinion is more fun. Next we have the attributes, and we should get 350 strength, 250 dexterity and 50 intelligence. But if you decide not to go all in on DPS, then you can sacrifice 100 dexterity for 100 constitution. Then next up we have the skull tree, and this is how it look like for the sword and shield. This layout is focused around high bursts of DPS and survivability, while this is how it look like for the spear, and this weapon's main focus is on crowd control and locking down the enemy as much as possible. So if you're looking for a super fun and CC oriented build then here it is. Next up we have the bow and spear. This is one of the most popular builds as with this setup you become an elusive ranged damage assassin with an arsenal of tools to help you escape while also bursting down enemies in few seconds. The bow by itself is incredibly strong in this game, but especially if you are a new player, then it will take time to get used to. And most importantly, you will need to hit your shots, otherwise you will lose out on DPS. So then this is where the spear comes into play, as we can use him to lock down our enemies and make them a very easy target. So let's take a look at our setup. For our gear choice we will go with the light armor, as this will give us the maximum damage and two really good dodge rolls. 
since this build always wants to be at max range and only go for the kill when locking down the enemy with our spears crowd control, so this choice should be self-explanatory. Next we have the attributes and we want to get 300 strength, then 350 dexterity, then 50 intelligence, and then also 25 in focus, and finally 50 constitution. I've allocated these attributes so we get insane damage. There've been done a bunch of testing, and it's been shown that for the spear and bow, it gives more damage if we go 200 strength and 350 in dexterity, rather than putting 550 only in dexterity because of a thing called diminishing returns. And as the spear by itself also scales from strength, so these points will give us great CC and DPS at the same time. Next we have our skill tree for the bow. This layout is more focused around damage over time and AUV, so that's why we invest heavily into the poison smoke and rain of arrows. And then again this is how it should look like for the spear. So this layout is structured around sweeping down the enemy and then doing quick bursts of damage while the target is immobilized. If you are interested in the best gear, perks, consumables and everything else, then keep watching until the end of the video. And overall, if you want to play one of the strongest solo player builds for both PvE and PvP, then here it is. And then for the last and final one, we have the rapier with the spear. This setup is mainly a PvP diving build that uses high single target damage and crowd control of the spear, while also having incredible mobility and defensive options from the rapier. On top of this, the setup can be used as a secondary source of burst damage, or as a player to CC a target to then begin a spear combo. This weapon combo will allow us to dive into the enemy lines, then focus on one target and then again easily escape. So let's jump into our way choice, and for this one we went with the light category. The rapier by itself is a very quick and agile weapon, so mostly going light category is probably the most optimized choice. Next we have attributes and we want to get 100 strength, then from 350 to 400 dexterity, then 25 focus and then finally also 150 constitution. We mainly wanted to focus on cooldown reduction and high base and crit damage, although keep in mind that, that these numbers are not set in stone, so you could easily mix and match 50 constitution with 50 dexterity in either direction. Next we have our skill tree setup, and this is how it should look like for the spear. So we mainly built it around some of the best crowd control skills and armor penetration. And then again this is how it should look like for the rapier. So for this one we focused on high bleeds and mobility tools to escape or catch a player. However, as we don't have many defenses, so you will need to get used to using the CC skills to stop and stun enemies, rather than having to block or cancel their attacks. Overall, if you want a challenging build which is harder than other builds, but also will give you 1v2 or even a 1v3 potential, then here you go. Next up we have the musket and the spear. In my opinion, by combining a melee weapon with a firearm is a great idea, as it allows you to engage targets from a distance, without leaving you vulnerable to the enemy's dedicated melee fighters. It also eliminates the mobility problem that many of the dedicated melee players have, so if you can't reach your enemy, just hit them with the musket round. This super fun build embraces the range plus melee idea, and turns it up to even 11, as it offers a combination of deadly long range burst damage, nasty debuffs, high sustain melee damage and annoying crowd control abilities. So first up we have our weight, and we want to go with the light category, as this will give us 2 dodge rolls, and as a musket player we mainly want to stay at long range. Next as far as attributes go we want to get 25 strength, then 350 dexterity, then 150 intelligence and then finally from 100 to 150 constitution. If you want you can sacrifice even more constitution for more DPS, but as there will be diminishing returns and we don't get much of defensive abilities, so I don't recommend it. Next we have our musket skill tree setup. And this is how it should look like. So our main primary objective was to build a setup based around trapping the enemies and defending ourselves in close range. So then if an enemy decides to target us, then we can use the musket, trap him, then switch to the spear and completely destroy him. And then again, this is how it should look like for the spear. So very similar focus in mind, as most skills and perks are based around ceasing the enemies and completely immobilizing them. So then us or our teammates can finish them off. Overall, if you are looking for an incredibly high CC build, with great damage and good survivability, then this is it. 
And then for the last and final part, let's take a look at the best gear, buffs and consumables that pretty much all builds could use. And remember that this is just an example. So as far as armor goes, of course slowly but shortly you want to get to 725 gear score. And no matter if you're using light, medium or heavy, always go with the opal gem on your gear. And if you can, then try to get these perks like health, refreshing and freedom. Then as far as your weapons go, use opal gem on all of your weapons as well. As we are going to be constantly moving, so the opal gem will be getting procced pretty much 24-7. And then for weapon perks, try to get keen, vicious and refreshing move. And then last but not the least, for the runes you have two options. So either way take the stone form or the detonate. Both of them are very useful, it just depends if you need more DPS or more defense. And then for your consumables, you should already know what to do. So use honing stones for damage increase, use attribute food for plus 40 attribute stats, and also don't forget about the healing and regen potions, just in case if you get in trouble. And that's about it. So if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe and comment. If you are interested in more content, then check out my channel and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace.